to discuss how to use the solver add-in in Excel. Now, as an add-in, uh, when you install Excel onto your computer, solver is not normally added as part of the installation. You have to go in after the fact and add solver in to Excel. Uh, and in order to do that, my recommendation is that you go on and you just simply Google on how to do add-ins in Excel and then uh, follow the directions and put solver in. Now, if you're not sure if the solver is there, uh, you can find it by going to the data tab in your ribbon and all the way at the end, you will find solver. I've installed solver uh, in mine uh, several years ago and um, it is a, a very interesting and powerful tool for uh, doing optimization. If you take an advanced course in uh, optimization theory or in engineering optimization theory um, or even uh, I would think in, um, in business school taking an advanced course in optimization theory they will cover uh, the linear programming and the simplex method for you doing linear programming. Solver does that, also does a couple of other optimization techniques. Uh, the linear programming, the variations of it include um, integer programming, uh, convex programming. It's a very powerful optimization tool used quite often in game theory. So with that as my uh, introduction into Solver, let me show you how to solve it, uh, use Solver to solve a problem. And uh, the problem is uh, a typical kind of Solver example. And then I'll do another one, which is not a typical Solver example. Uh, maybe in another video. I haven't decided yet if I'm put it in this one. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, we're running a business, and let's say we have here listed four customers. And the customers order a product that we sell. And we have the product stored in two different warehouses. We have it stored in warehouse one and warehouse two. And it costs a different amount to ship out of each warehouse. So customer one shipping out of warehouse one is a dollar, but shipping out of warehouse two is two fifty. Customer two is three dollars and five dollars, and so on down the line. Now, each of the four customers places an order, and here we have well, customer one has ordered thirty five thousand items, customer two twenty two thousand, eighteen thousand, thirty thousand, and so on. And what we want to do is to decide how many of each item we're going to ship to each customer uh, to minimize our cost. And you might think, well, well, obviously we're going to ship from the warehouse that costs us the least for each customer. So that means customer one, we would ship out of warehouse one. Customer four, we would ship out of warehouse two. The problem and the reason why we are not able to do that is that there may not be enough pieces in each warehouse to fulfill the orders if we only ship out of the cheapest warehouse. So for example, I'm showing here that warehouse one has six, 60,000 items while warehouse two has 80,000. So we may not be able to ship customers one, two, and three, all out of warehouse one, which would be the cheapest way to ship for them. So that is what complicates the problem. Now we have some constraints built in here. Now let me just show you what some of these numbers, where they come from. Um, first of all, we have, let's say total shipped, and this would be total shipped for warehouse one. So the total ship for warehouse one includes all the items that would be shipped for the, all of the customers in total. 
and the total shipped out of warehouse one has to be less than or equal to the number of items in warehouse one. Similarly, for warehouse two, the total shipped has to be less than or equal to the total number of items in warehouse two. So that's a constraint. Another constraint is with each customer, we might ship some items out of warehouse one and some out of warehouse two. The total number of items that the customer receives should equal the same as the amount of items that they ordered. So total received for customer one should be 30, 35,000 because 35,000 is what they ordered. Similarly for the other customers. So that's the, the problem that we have to solve. And then we figure out what the total cost is. The total cost here, um, now in Excel, I use a function called sum product. Now what that's calculating here is we're saying, okay, for customer one, we have the amount of, uh, the number of items out of warehouse one times the shipping cost for warehouse one plus the number of items for warehouse two times the shipping cost for warehouse two. And then we add to that the number of items for customer two out of warehouse one times the cost, warehouse two times the cost. Add to that number of items for customer three out of warehouse one times the cost and so on. So that is how we compute the total shipping cost, which is calculated right here is calculated using an Excel function called sum product, which multiplies the appropriate numbers uh, in each cell and then adds them all up, which is why it's called sum product. You might want to look into that and to understand better how it works. So we have constraints where this has to equal that, that has to equal that, that has to equal that, and so on. We have this total shipped out of warehouse one has to be less than the number of items available, similarly for warehouse two. And so we want to minimize this number by choosing the values for these numbers right in here, subject to our sets of constraints that I've just talked about. We also have constraints on the problem where we can't be shipping a negative number of items. So all of our numbers have to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. So this is the nature of a linear programming problem. It might be different than the kinds of optimization problems you have run into so far in, um, in calculus. So with that, let's look at how we use Solver to set up this problem. So I click on Solver here. And the first item right up here is the objective. The objective is the number we're trying to minimize. And in this case, we're trying to minimize what's in this cell. So that's C13, and we're trying to minimize it. We're going to change, vary the values in the cells here that are marked in yellow. So we select those cells. So, um, so here is our objective. Now we click on here and then we click here and shift click here. That selects all those cells and puts this, the reference to the cells here uh, in this box going from B8 to E9. So B8 all the way to E9 over here. So all of these cells right in here. Now we have to add our constraints. Now I said that we have basically uh, two sets of constraints. So I'm gonna hit add for add constraint. In the first constraint, so I'm gonna say that the, these two values have to pairwise be less than these two values. So this has to be less than that. This has to be less than that. So in order to enter that, I'm going to click, shift click, that number goes in here, those two cells going to be less than or equal to what goes in here is then click and shift click. So that's that. I'll hit OK. So that constraint has now gone in. Now I want to put in this constraint where this value has to equal that, this value has to equal that, 
this value has to equal that and so on so let me add that add and now I'm going to put select shift click to select that so that goes in here now this is going to have to be equal to pairwise these values so click shift click and then OK so we have B10, B10 to E10 has to equal B11 here to E11 here. And then F8 and F9, these two, have to be less than H8 and H9, these two. Now down here, it says select the solving method. I'm going to select simplex. Now I'm going to hit solve and uh, here is the solution and uh, the solution is that our total shipping cost is two hundred thousand dollars now let's look at some of these values and see if they make sense always look at your solution to see if it makes sense okay now we notice that for customer one customer two and customer three that shipping out of warehouse one is always the cheapest and indeed for customer one we ship everything out of warehouse one customer two we ship everything out of warehouse one the problem is with customer three now uh, there aren't enough items in warehouse one to ship everything out to customer three but customer three notice here customer three it only cost a buck fifty to ship one item out of warehouse two to customer three. So it, it kind of makes sense here that we would ship so many items to customer three out of warehouse two because shipping to him out of warehouse two is the most inexpensive. Customer four, warehouse two is the cheapest. So everything gets shipped to customer four out of warehouse two. So this makes complete sense. Now, you might wonder if we had picked a different optimization method, if we would have gotten the same answer. Sometimes the answers can deviate a little bit. Uh, and uh, let's pick this uh, nonlinearity method non and let's solve this and see what happens. And indeed, it looks like we get exactly the same answer. Keep, okay, which is why none of the numbers have changed. So that is um, an example of how to use solver. Uh, there's a, another problem that I want to discuss, but I will save that for another video. It's how to choose um, values and magic square. This is a simpler problem. Uh, but it has a little different twist to it. So I'll talk about that uh, in the next video. Okay, that's it.